Let's talk about follow actions and see how to use it in a musical context. So I have a session over here. Of course, we're in session view right now. If we click a clip under the clip view area, there's this launch box. And in the launch box, you should see all the follow action settings. Now, if you don't see the launch box, you can click over here on this L icon to open the launch box. All right, so how does it work? So it's pretty straightforward. Follow action defines what Ableton will do after a set time after you trigger a particular clip. So I've selected this clip, for example, and I can go over here under the follow action time. I can define when to do that other thing. So right now it's set to two bars. So over here we have bar, beat and 16th note. So if that's set to two, it's exactly two bars. So after two bars, we're telling Ableton, all right, do something. And what that something is, is going to be based on what we select over here. So I can say no action, so it doesn't do anything. I can say stop, so it'll stop playing that clip even though loop would be on. I can say play that clip again. Now these first three options are pretty straightforward. You don't really need follow actions to do these, but it gets a bit more interesting with some of these other options. For example, let's talk about next. Well, a very simple thing I can do is, so I have this chord progression over here. In fact, I have a bunch of different chord progressions. I just want Ableton to just cycle through these one after the other. So I'll select this first clip and I'll leave the follow action at two bars because that's how long this sequence is. If you look over here, I have a two bar long chord progression. And in the, under the follow action category on the left one over here, there's two of these. We'll talk about this second one in a second. But the left one, I'm going to set to next. So now when I trigger that first clip, So you can see after two bars, it jumped ahead and played the second clip. Of course, you can change that time. This clip was two bars long, but you can also set it to one bar. So it's not going to wait for the entire clip to finish. Right after one bar is done, it's going to move on to whatever is defined here, the follow action A. So let's try that again. So that can be a pretty helpful way to set up some kind of automated system where it cycles through a set of chords. So if I wanted it to cycle through all of these one by one, I can just select the first one, hold down shift, and select the very last one. So all these are selected together. And then I can go in here and define what's going to happen to all of them. You see these asterisks because they all have different settings. So I'll just choose two bars for all of them, two, zero, zero. And let's say the follow action is going to be next. So if I trigger that first one, it's going to move on to the second after two bars. And then the third and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. Now we can play around with this. Uh, we have next, of course you can choose previous. That's first and last. So in this set, this is the first and this is the last. So even though I have multiple clips on this particular track, only contiguous ones are defined as one collection. So this can be useful to separate out sections. So I can have all these run through with, with the follow action of next. And maybe I can set up a bunch of other clips with different settings. So that's the same one. But maybe the second one over here, maybe this number four, this number five. I'll select the first one, shift click the last one. And now all these I'll set to maybe any. So now any of the clips will get triggered within this group. And in this group, it'll always go through, you know, one after the other. Now, that same list is also over here. So you have follow action A and then you have follow action B. The difference is that you get to define a ratio or a chance of which of the two happens for all of these selected clips. So for example, let's go back to this one. So I'm going to select all these guys again using that shift click technique. So they all set to any. Let's actually change this. Let's change this to next. So they're all going to basically move on to the next one. And when it reaches the last one, the next is going to be the first one in this collection. So that's what's going to happen there. And the chance is set to one is to zero. Now we can't really call this a ratio because there's no such ratio as one is to zero. 
we just think of it as a chance value. So if this number is higher than this number, obviously there's a higher chance of this happening. If this is set to zero, this is never going to happen at all. So I can just set this, leave it at one or at 999. It's not going to make much of a difference. But let's give this a chance of maybe 444 and this a chance of 132. And let's set this to previous. So there's a higher chance of the pattern going downwards than going upwards. So let's find out. I'll trigger one of the clips. So you can see that it's mostly kind of scrolling down, but then once in a while it kind of triggers the previous one and then the previous one goes back to the first one. So mostly it's going downwards, but once in a while it does go upwards. So you can kind of define a um, probability factor of, you know, any of these two options. So I can set up one to be any and the other one to be first. And now if I set it, or also I did not select all of them. So you want to make sure to select all of them when you set that up. So I'll set this to any and this one to first. So now when I trigger one of the clips, so it's mostly picking, randomly picking through any of these clips, but once in a while you can see it is forcing it to go back to the beginning, essentially the first clip. So that's basically how follow actions work. I hope that makes sense. Stay tuned for more.